The following presentation of the Mass is made possible by your generous support of the Catholic TV Network. A continued happy Easter to all of you on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the last day of the Easter octave. We're so grateful to Father Adrian Millick for being with us uh, for Mass today. And our own Jimmy Reynolds is the, uh, the lector. Uh, Father Adrian, of course, is pastor of the uh, Light of Christ Catholic Collaborative, Holy Ghost in Whitman, and St. Bridget's in Abington, both parish and school. Father Adrian, thank you for being with us on this Divine Mercy Sunday. Could you please lead us in prayer? Thank you, Bishop. In the name of the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast Kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. Whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark in his, in the, the nails in his hands, and I put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a part of us that really likes to see people get what they deserve. Something within us rejoices when we see a car that cut us off on the road get pulled over by the cops just a few yards down. Or hearing that some scammer say, selling some sort of you know, fake merchandise ended up getting counterfeit bills in exchange. Or just seeing some highly successful individual at an awards ceremony call out someone who told them they were, when they were just starting out, that they wouldn't amount to anything. Those those little moments of vindication just feel really good. But that desire is not one that Jesus shares. 
We see that in the merciful way he treats the disciples in today's gospel. These are people who have all claimed that they would follow him even at the cost of their lives. But when danger actually came, all ran away. Well, St. Peter denied him three times because he was so afraid of a serving woman recognizing him as a follower of Jesus. St. Thomas wouldn't even believe that Christ had risen from the dead even when all his friends were telling him that they saw him and insisted that he would only come to believe if he could touch the wounds with his hand to make sure that they were real. How, how intimate a, a demand that is. And so it would seem natural that when Jesus showed up, he should greet them with some sort of snide comment about their bravery. Or he should start by chastising them for not believing that he would die and rise again, despite the fact that he spent so much of his ministry telling them that that's exactly what was going to happen. He does none of those things. Instead, when he comes, he offers them peace. And then he institutes the sacrament of confession and tells them to forgive the sins of others. I think he does that for a very important reason. Because he helps the disciples to recognize their own weakness and sinfulness, their need for a savior, before they would be able to be good confessors to others who are also sinful and in need of a savior. They needed to experience Jesus' divine mercy to know that the proper response to human sin isn't gloating, isn't revenge, it's mercy. And that gives me a lot of hope for myself and for all of us. Because it tells me that no matter what, God's mercy is available to me and anyone else who needs it. It also tells me that each of us really needs to commit ourselves to living out that mercy in our own interactions with each other. That we should be striving to forgive and to love those who have failed us just as much as we want to do that for those who make loving them easy. Jesus shows us that while seeing people get what they deserve might feel great in that moment, but it's only helping ourselves and others to become better and holier through the giving and receiving of mercy that creates something truly good and beautiful for all eternity. And that is much more important for us to pursue. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, trusting in God's goodness, we turn to him with hope of his mercy.
For the church, may she share the good news of Christ's resurrection with the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, may our merciful Lord bring an end to all violence and injustice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, may the Lord bring them healing and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the viewers and benefactors of Catholic television, may they be blessed and guided to greater holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our beloved dead, may they rejoice with Christ in heaven as they await the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for hearing us and for all the ways you show us your mercy. And we ask you to open our hearts ever more fully to your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those that you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have called us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints that pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So I thank you all for joining me for this Mass. It's always such a joy to celebrate uh, with you, especially this Divine Mercy Sunday, which is a feast that's very close to my heart. I want to thank uh, Jimmy for doing the readings and everyone else here at uh, Catholic TV for all they do to make these Masses so, so beautiful. And I wish everybody a wonderful rest of the Easter season. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. We have worshiped God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord has invited us to the altar, and this great prayer has brought benefit to ourselves, the church, and the whole world. Please help the television mass to continue by sending a donation to Bishop Reed, the Catholic TV Network, P.O. Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471. Join us anytime on Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire or watch and contribute online at catholictv.com.